Hi everyone, my name is Sarah McLean and I'm a political science major with a concentration in international relations and comparative government. I'm also minoring communications at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. This summer, I had the opportunity to complete a program through the School of the School for International Training with the help of the UTC Office for Undergraduate Research and Creative Endeavors and UTC Study Abroad. My SIT program was a virtual internship that was based out of South Africa that focused on diplomacy, conflict resolution, and international relations. Okay, so just a little bit about the internships and like, like what I did. So um, the program was from June 13th to July 22nd. So it was only a six week program, so very short. Um, my job was to attend and learn from virtual lectures based around the topics of diplomacy, international relations, and conflict resolution. Um, so here are my program mentors for the summer. First is Nasiba Lushaba. She was our academic coordinator through the School for International Training. Dr. Buckus, that was our academic director for my program. And finally, Ashaf Patel. Um, he is a senior research associate with the Institute for Global Dialogue with a focus in digital economy with over 15 years of experience in the research sector. Dr. Patel was my project leader, and I'll get into like what my project was in a couple slides, so just wait. Um, so first, I'm going to talk about our host institution through site. So our host institution was the Institute for Global Dialogue. IGD is an independent foreign policy think tank based in South Africa that was established in 1995 after several years of efforts led by Nelson Mandela, a former South African president. IGD's main goal is to expand South Africa's foreign policy and diplomatic endeavors. IGD's mission statement explains that the institution strives to provide independent cutting edge policy research and analysis, catalytic dialogue and stakeholder interference on global dynamics that have an impact on South Africa and Africa. Um, so this is just a really short timeline of my summer and just the different research uh, lectures that we attended this summer going through this program. Um, yeah, by far my favorite was our very last one that was on working in the foreign service. That is my main goal after graduation. So any chance I have to hear about foreign service, I'm going to take it. Um, now I'm going to get into the three projects that we had this summer. Um, the three IGD projects were integrating economic justice through the African Free Trade Agreement. This was pursuing the passage of African Free Trade Agreement in African government and analyzing the opportunities for inclusion of marginalized voices. Project two was BRICS, and BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Um, it's an acronym for a powerful group of leaders in the market of economics, and it this project explored the development of BRICS and evaluating the role of BRICS in conflict resolution, peace, and social justice. And our final project was uh, on the African Union, and this was exploring the development of the African Union and analyzing the government structure and development. So just some duties and responsibilities we had as virtual interns was to attend and participate in lectures and class discussions. We had to submit journals and weekly progress reports. We had to stay up to date with current events and news related to South Africa. We researched topics related to our independent internship tasks and collaborate, collaborated with group members on internship tasks. I was assigned to work with Project One this summer that was, in, that was evaluating uh, the social economic justice in the African Free Trade Agreement. My project focused on uh, the World Trade Organization's conference that took place in June. This conference was originally supposed to take place in June of 2020. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was postponed until just now. Uh, my first task was following the conference day by day, and it focused on understanding the key items of agenda for the conference. These items included food security, international trade, and economic stability, handling of the pandemic, and equal ac access to COVID vaccines new regulations and restrictions on subseas and fisheries to better protect global and natural resources. Um, task two was writing a three to four page paper that worked 
I worked on with a partner. Um, I never collaborated on a paper before. That's something that I haven't had the opportunity to do in college. So that was new and exciting for me. Um, this paper focused on the gains and losses on fisheries, COVID-19, and food security. Now I'm going to get into what I learned this summer and like what I spent my summer researching. So first was about COVID and COVID vaccinations. All developed and developing nations should be allowed equal access to vaccines and medical resources in order to protect their domestic populations. Less developed countries seem to endure the worst of the pandemic's damage, especially with the increasing worldwide gap in economic growth and financial resources between rich and poor countries. When it comes to international affairs, the global South always seems to become undermined in the face of globalization or economic industrialization. For the sake of combating the COVID-19 pandemic, the World Trade Organization established the ministerial declaration on the World Trade Organization's response to COVID and future pandemics. Here, the World Trade Organization acknowledged their importance of increasing their multilateral trading system to boost vaccine production and distribution for member nations. Second, with food security, um, the World Food Organization is the largest humanitarian organization that focuses on food assistance to build a pathway to peace, stability, and prosperity for people recovering from conflict, disasters, and the impact of climate change. The World Trade Organization signed in June that members shall not impose restrictions on food that are purchased for non-commercial humanitarian purposes. This comes as a relief to the organizations like World Food that strive to protect civilians from food insecurity and starvation. Furthermore, there should be no prevention of the World Trade Organization member countries from protecting their domestic food security in accordance to agreements. Another aspect of food security is that the World Trade Organization's role in international agriculture. The ministerial agreement on agriculture focuses on ensuring international trade is fair yet competitive amongst all members while addressing the important concerns like food security and the environment. According to trade dialogues on food, after the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the World Trade Organization decided to create food storage facilities to collect foods that cannot be exported for redistribution in order to, de to decrease food waste. Finally, fisheries. Since 2001, there has been major discussions on enacting global rules to suppress fisheries and nations that partake in illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing and damage our environment. According to a 2020 report from the Food and Ag Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, an estimated 34% of global fish populations are being overfished today compared to 10% in 1974, causing massive exploitation to the point where fish populations can, cannot replenish themselves. If fish populations continue to dwindle, it becomes a threat to, the commu to communities that rely on fisheries for their livelihood and food security. A newly revised agreement on fisheries is one of the World Trade or Organization's first that centers itself around environmental sustainability. The agreement prohibits member nations from providing any subsidies or grants to those who engage in illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing and provide new regulations towards overcapacity and overfishing for all nations. <laughs> Finally, um, my takeaways from the summer. Um, one of my main takeaways was learning a definition for diplomacy. Um, diplomacy is the art or science of managing international relationships. Politicians establish a country's foreign policy and diplomacy achieves it. Working as a diplomat is my career goal and I never really had a clear way of explaining the importance of diplomacy until I had it phrased this way to me by one of our lecturers this summer. Um, I feel like I have a better understanding of the World Trade Organization and the role that it plays internationally. The World Trade Organization was something I was new about and knew that it was important, but I never understood what exactly that organization did. In the summer, I learned that the World Trade Organization ensures the flow of international trade going as smoothly, predictably, and freely as possible. Next, um, I definitely have improved time management skills, writing skills, and international understanding. With COVID-19, online classes have become very normal. However, I never had a program that required this kind of independent work. And learning how to juggle personal and educational commitments this summer was um, a skill that I feel like I can really carry with me into this next year of school. Um, and reflecting on my choice 
of career in the Foreign Service. I've spoken to other people that work in Foreign Service, but hearing Anne Linnea's experience really solidified that I made the right decision with my major, choosing this program this summer, and um, with my career goals. Um, I was really hoping to take that away this summer, and I can say that I'm leaving this program with um, resting in the fact that I made the right decision. Um, next, my challenges this summer. I struggled a lot with self-discipline and time management. While completing my weekly journal assignments, I found that I was lacking motivation to complete the tasks asked of me. It wasn't because of my, my lack of interest in the topics or lectures, rather just my lack of structure that made me not want to complete my tasks. When I'm in a normal school semester at my university, I plan my classes back to back in order to have free time for my on-campus jobs and clubs. This rigid schedule makes it so I have very specific set, set times I have to complete assignments and studying. Um, I thought I would enjoy the flexibility to be able to work on my workload whenever and wherever. However, that was not the case. And I found myself waiting until the very last minute to complete things, which I normally don't do in um, a normal semester. Um, this realization really lit a fire under my butt and I pushed myself to rely on my productivity and not relying on my environment to create that productivity. Um, so I definitely think I can also carry that into my educational and professional career. Thank you so much for attending this conference and taking time to listen to my experience this summer. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the conference.